Hey guys, it's Bub here. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the next version of Windows. Today, we're taking a look at Windows 11 version 22H2. Now before we begin, I'd like everyone to know that 22H2 is not out publicly yet. It is currently still in the release preview channel of the Windows Insider program, so you can't go out and update your regular Windows 11 computer to this without being in the Windows Insider program. However, it is still cool to have pretty much the final build of 22H2 out and ready to explore. Now again, just keep in mind that we have no clue when this is going to ship. It could ship in July or it could ship in October. We have no clue. First off, there have been a ton of changes to Start Menu and the Taskbar. So first off, we can go ahead and change our Start Menu to either have more pins, like this, the default Start Menu, which many people criticize because Recommended took up half of the Start Menu, or you could have more recommendations and less pinned apps. Personally, I think I like more pins a lot more, but again, this just comes down to personal preference. You can now switch between the two. Also, when you go to shut down your machine, there is now a sign in options button in the power menu. You can also now create folders in your start menu by simply dragging the app on top of another app. And when you click on it, you can go ahead and create a name just like that. And now you have start menu folders, something that they got rid of, but technically brought back. I guess this would be more like the, the live tile folders and not the actual start menu folders. Something that I just found out that I didn't even have on my list for 22H2 is that when you hover over the network and volume icons in the taskbar, you can now use your scroll wheel to adjust the volume. Actually, it's not the network one. If you hover over the volume, only the volume, you can adjust just by moving your scroll wheel. That is honestly pretty cool. I, I'm, I find myself using that a lot. I think I'm gonna use that. Now when you adjust your volume, it now comes up in the center instead of in the top left corner, like in the current version of Windows 11, which this looks so much better than the old one. It feels more modern, especially with a volume scroll wheel on my keyboard. In the WinX menu, which has become significantly more popular now that Task Manager has been removed out of the taskbar right-click menu, we can see some changes here. For example, Apps and Features has been changed to Installed Apps. Furthermore, Command Prompt has been removed and replaced with terminal which is opens up in powershell by default but you can go ahead and open a command prompt tab and this is literally just command prompt it just looks a lot cleaner and a lot more modern so if we open up a few apps so i'm just going to open up these three apps the in the alt tab menu has been updated to not take up the entire display so if you remember previously when you went to alt tab the entire display would get acrylic out and you would it would just be a disaster now when we go back to our desktop and we alt tab it only takes up the center of your display which is i'm pretty sure this is how it functioned in windows 10 and it looks so much more clean similar to focus in ios which you took a look at earlier this month focus has been brought to windows so you can silence notifications have a focus timer and things like that i've really not had a time to mess around with focus so we can see do not disturb is on you'll only see banners for priority and alarms we can change that here, which there is a total focus mode of, yeah, right here. We can change that here, but you can also set a focus timer. So doing that, of course, clock needs an update. I think it'll be a timer so that after a certain amount of time, you'll start receiving notifications again. Again, I have not had a lot of time to, to start looking at this. The introduction of Windows 11 brought snap layouts by simply hovering over the maximize button. Well, now when you go to snap a window to the top of the display, you'll see different snap layouts there as well. So honestly, I think these are new snap layouts. I'm not entirely sure. You can now see them when you snap to the top of the display. While we're in the file explorer, let's take a look here. So quick access has been renamed to home. I thought this release was supposed to have tabs, but I really cannot find it at all. I'm not sure why that's not here. There is also supposed to be one OneDrive integration. So for example, on my other, my Windows Insider laptop, I do have a option to sign in and have OneDrive integrated in this top corner right here. Again, not sure why it isn't in this specific install. And there are also folder previews. So I don't believe that there's any folders on here by default. Um, so if I go in here, I'm just gonna create a new Word document just like that. We can now see that what is in that folder is a Word document. So folder previews are finally back. They should have never been removed. So in the legacy context menu, we can now see that there are more, there is more padding in between objects and 
there's no longer that annoying bright blue color when we right click on something like we can see here. It is literally just highlighting in the previous old gray color which looks so much nicer in those apps that don't support the new context menus. Also, I had a complaint about this when I first got Windows 11. Right clicking on Recycle Bin now opens an updated context menu because previously it was this and right clicking on the desktop and right clicking on the Recycle Bin yielded two totally different results and now it's pretty much seamless. Task Manager has finally gotten an update after so many years it looks more modern and much more nice. So this really fits the design of Windows 11. We can see it has all the same features just on the left hand side and overall it looks so much cleaner. Efficiency mode has also been added for processes so if I wanted to right click here we can't put Task Manager in efficiency mode but if we can put right here I don't know so there are some things that you cannot put in efficiency mode like obviously you can put host process in efficiency um, yeah so this little eco icon represents efficiency mode I think edge puts itself by itself um, but there, it's just way more detailed um, and I, I like it a lot there is a new print queue so here's my simple notepad document when I press control P this is the default Windows print queue. It is updated to match the Windows 11 kind of theme, and you can even add network printers from straight in there. It has an instant reference back to the settings application. It just looks so much better than the one that we found, which I believe it was from like Windows Vista or something. I'm not entirely sure. So in the Windows lock screen, there is an updated accessibility men menu, so it looks way more modern. Um, than the one that we found in Windows 8, which was still integrated. But clicking on the network, this is still the same one from Windows 10 with the same square airplane mode button. It just looks horrible. Inside of settings, Microsoft has done a lot of cleaning up. For example, um, the focus page was added. Obviously, we looked at that earlier. Disks and volumes has been cleaned up, and so many other little things in this settings app have been cleaned up. There's a lot of things in here. I can't point out every single one of them. For example, um, one thing that I just, again, didn't even put on my list, s everything in settings is now centered. So if you remember previously, everything in settings would previously just go to the left. So personalization would be right here, but now they've centered it. And there's just a lot of white space on the left and right side of the actual content. And finally, probably one of the worst things Microsoft could have done this build, now in Windows 11 Pro, requires you to have a Microsoft account. So now, like Windows 11 Home did since the launch, you need a Microsoft account to go ahead and set up Windows 11 Pro. But there is a bypass. If you go in and you select set up this device for work and school, hit sign in options, and then join to a local Active Directory domain, it will let you create a local account and you don't even have to join an AD domain. It is literally that simple and honestly they need to keep doing that because for those who do have actual active directory domains I don't think you can really use a Microsoft account with local ones and so with that being said that is a brief overview of what's new in Windows 11 22h2 definitely let me know what you think about this update personally I think this is the update that we should have had when Windows 11 came out so many things are refined it feels much more polished and this is what Windows 11 should have been with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.